Hello everybody, good afternoon, happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a lovely day and the sun is shining a little bit where I am, so um, that makes for a good day. Um, so it is time for our stories again and today I'm very, very excited to be joined by one of my new favourite people in the whole wide world because she creates the most fabulous shoes that I just dance around the shop in all day. Um, so today I'm going to be chatting with Di and um, same kind of series of questions, the same focus and I'm very excited to hear all about her story. So let's bring Di in. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. lovely to see you. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's a treat to be able to hear your story. So I'm very excited about it. Oh, no problem at all. I hope I don't bore you all. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Um, so for the viewers that maybe don't know you or your brand, do you want to just give us a, a little overview of it before we start um, the story questions? Yeah, sure. No problem at all. So uh, my name's Diane Hassel. I have been designing wedding shoes forever. Um, when I left uni, um, that's when I started my my business on my own the first time, um, making handmade wedding shoes. Um, I, it wasn't what I trained in at uni. I did fashion and textiles, so I had to go through lots of different processes and lots of different learnings and ups and downs and roller coasters to get there. But um, it was always sort of a, an obsession, was the thing that I wanted to do. Um, and then I've basically worked in the bridal shoe industry for about 30 or so years now. Wow. Um, I've worked for big companies. Um, I've been head of design at big companies and small companies. I've set up companies with other people. But I've always come back to wanting to do the whole artisan, um, you know, one-to-one, -one, dealing with brides direct, offering lots of um, different things and so on. So, um, yeah, about four years ago, I uh, left industry um, to do my own thing again. Uh, I'm absolutely loving it, despite COVID. Um, and um, I am, I'm sort of, you know, back in a little studio on my own, creating um, with a, a small team of people helping me in the background, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, creating um, individual designs of my own, not limited by the whole uh, manufacturing side and so on, or not too limited anyway. So um, yeah, so that's where I, that's where I am and what I'm up to now. Sounds like an absolute dream job to just be surrounded by shoes all day, every day. I think everybody thinks that. I mean, with every business, there are ups and downs, but I count my lucky stars every single yeah. day. I absolutely love doing it. And, you know, there's there's nothing more rewarding than being part of somebody's big day, is there? I mean, yeah. it's, it's one of the loveliest things is to be able to, um, feel that you've been a part of making someone's day very special. And, you know, even now, all these years on, I get letters from brides that I made shoes for, you know, back in 90s and early 2000s and so on, saying, I've still got my shoes, I still love them, I keep them in a special box. You know, it's an absolutely lovely job to have. Um, shoes have always been my obsession since I was tiny. Um, and, you know, as I say, wedding shoes, you know, what what could be lovelier, really? Oh. I know. They're the ultimate, aren't they, I think? Yeah. Um, you know, they are the archetypal princess shoe, aren't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> most brides want a bit of sparkle or some flowers or so something yeah. lovely. And, you know, to be honest, that's all the stuff that that really floats my boat. That's, that's the thing that I love to do. And that's what I didn't get when I was in manufacturing. Um, okay, I was designing lots of shoes and it was, you know, it was exciting in its own way and it was still for brides and so on. But you couldn't do that whole, um, you know, getting really under a bride's skin and finding out, you know, oh, I'm mad about pearls or I love flowers yeah. or I'm all about stars or, you know, I don't like sparkle at all or whatever it may be. It's, you know, it's great to hear that and think, OK, um, and you want a low heel and you want, you know, we're looking yeah. at this sort of colouring and, and, you know, working around that to create something really special for someone. is it's, it's a privilege, really. You know, yeah, it it absolutely is. Um, but let's just um, move away ever so slightly from um, the brand. And would you share with us your story? So how you ended up 
where you are now, um, what's influenced you, all of those types of things. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, as I said, I did I did fashion and textiles um, at uni, and I mean, going way back when I was little, um, I remember. I think I must have been about five or six and we moved to um, the outskirts of Nottingham and my mum took me into Nottingham city centre shopping and I was all excited anyway and I managed to come home with three pairs of shoes yeah. and I still remember that you know it's still in my heart that 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 day still remember it to this day and I'm sure that was the start of my my obsession with shoes I mean one was a pair of school shoes yeah. one was a pair of smart shoes and one was a pair of dance shoes but I didn't care I had these three shoe boxes lined yeah. up sort of at the side of my bed and I was just so excited by it and although I love clothes and fashion and jewellery and you know all things lovely for me it's 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 always been about shoes so you know as I say it's, it was you know it went way back and I, I don't think I ever thought I was going to do anything else wow. um but I did fashion and textiles at uni um, in Birmingham and uh, I concentrated all my projects. You kind of went more towards fashion or interiors while I always went towards the fashion side. And most of my projects and so on, I was geared them towards accessories. So yeah, I would yeah. make bags or, you know, any any number of different things, really, or jewellery or um so I think you know I I am I'm a, I'm not really a sort of hoarder collector type person, but I just like really beautiful, lovely things, and more often than not textiles. You know, I, you know I, I love choosing bedding or you know <laughs> cushions or all those sort of things. That's the kind of person I am. So yeah, so it, like I say, it was always a bit of an obsession with with footwear and fabrics and textiles and so on. Um, and when I finished uni, I went to live in London. And I went, I did a business course, which was not really my thing, but, you know, a necessity. Yeah, of course. I remember feeling totally out of my depth and feeling like everyone else on the course was really fantastic at everything. And there was, you know, little me going, oh, I want to make shoes. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but actually, um, when it came to the end of the course, I won the award for the highest number of sales because I'd actually gone out into shops and sold my shoes. Yeah. And then I thought, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can, you know, be a success doing this and so on. Um, so I set up my own business um, in Islington and that in that area of North London, um, where I worked and lived for many years. But of course, you know, life changes and, you know, thing, things change in your world and so on. And in the end, when I had um, my son and so on, I wanted to be out of London. Yeah. Um, so I moved to the Cotswolds. And at that point in time, I was working for a manufacturer that came about through a weird set of circumstances. I'd formed a company with someone else. We did really well. We then, our partnership then, we went our separate ways, for one reason or another. And then I was headhunted by um, another company, went to work for them for a long time. And I really loved it. I mean, it was, it was, it was a great business and um, it was still exciting being, you know, part of a bride's big day and so on. Yeah. I always yearned for that, um, you know, I suppose the control and so on that you get from having your own business, like, you know, like you feel and so on. You yeah. Make your own choices, you live or die by them, but you do make your own choices and um, you're able to create something. I wanted to create really more unique things and so on. And you can't do that in, in manufacturing. Yeah. So, um, my husband kindly um, bought me a little studio down at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> and, um, and I started from there, um, as I say, when I left industry. And, um, uh, you know, I live in the Cotswolds now. It's a beautiful place. I can walk out my door and up the hills in literally two minutes and so oh, on. Wow. Um, so I have, I have a, I, you know, I love my life. And, and I think I've got the happy medium now of, of you know, having a business and having a nice life and so on as well. And, you know, I think probably this year has, has slowed everything down for everybody yeah. in, in lots of ways, but it has made us all appreciate what we've got and, you know, how we've come to where we are and whether it's the right thing for us and so on. It was very yeah. hard for me to, lose, to leave the industry side of things because leaving a secure business and a yeah. salary and everything you know it wasn't an easy decision but it was absolutely the right decision yes wow um 
And so can I ask you, so when you got married, whose shoes did you wear? I wore my own. Did you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yes, um, I, I'm, I've actually been married twice. And um, my um, when I was in my twenties and I'm a bit crazy and headstrong and, and whatever, um, yeah. I did make my own shoes then, and I've still got them. They're still lovely. Um, yeah. But when I ma married my husband, that I've now been married to for eighteen years, and you know, met him while I was in the Cotswolds and so on, um, I was still working for another company then, and. Uh, we made a particular style which really was too high for me because I'm not a big high heel wearer. I have a slight problem with one of my feet. And so I don't tend to wear very high heels. But I was like, no, I'm having them. I yeah. want those shoes. I am wearing those. <laughs> and in fact, I was fine. I, you know, I didn't have to walk too far and, and I was fine. And I, again, I've, I've still got them. They're very special. Oh. I've got in our loft, we have boxes of sort of sample shoes and so on that go back to well, they go back to my uni days and so on. And I've got some that I made sort of in the late 80s and early 90s. Oh, and wow. They're really long sort of chiseled toes and, and, you know, quite unusual shapes, some of them, and lots of very curvy Louis heels. Yeah. Uh, I can't part with them because they're like oh. part of my history, really. Um, and it's really funny because now I look at lots of styles and think, oh, God, you know, that's – that's coming back and and you know that style is sort of reappearing and toes are getting a little bit longer and a little bit squarer and you know yeah things turn on, on, on us you know a yeah do you do you ever wear the same pair of shoes twice or do you always just wear them once and then make yourself a new pair no I I wear I wear them lots and lots I'm a bit I'm quite really my friends laugh that I'm really difficult to buy shoes with I remember Ooh. I remember saying about someone else, oh, God, she was really difficult. And my friend burst out laughing and she went, coming from the most picky <laughs> person in the world, how can you say that? But I never thought of myself like that, you know. But I, I um, it, for me, it, it is about, you know, the look and the colour and everything, but it's also yeah. how they're made and, you know, the finish and, and all those sort of things. I'm, I'm, I can't do cheap you know what I would call cheap shoes really I think shoes you should buy shoes that are um that you really love that's the important thing and that you're yeah. gonna wear you know in these times of sustain sorry sustainability we all want to buy things that we can wear long term and and so on really Absolutely. so if I do make myself a pair then I, I will keep them you know and wear them again and again really yeah um, I don't have the kind of life where I go out a lot you know, <laughs> being very glam and so on, especially yeah. on this, of course. Um, but um, uh, but I do, you know, if, if we've got an event or we're going somewhere or whatever, I, I really love looking for a, a fab pair of shoes. And, you know, I've got some really bright fuchsia pink um, fuchsia shoes with fringing across the front that my husband bought me, I don't know, a couple of Christmases ago. And I absolutely love them. And I just get them out and have a little wander around in them. Oh, yeah. Because they need to come out, don't they? You know. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but whatever um, shoes I buy, I, I, you know, it's like a major thing for me. I've got to really do the research, look at them, decide whether I really like them. You know, I'd yeah. sooner spend, I'd sooner save and spend and buy one thing that I really love than have loads of pairs really yes of course of course um so i'm just gonna, if it's okay i'm just going to read a couple of comments because there's some people yeah, watching sure. and i think it's nice so um steve said hello die it's so lovely to hear your story i've been lucky enough to photograph some of your shoes at Maisie darling and they are exquisite so um oh, thank you steve how lovely thank yeah, you he, bless him and um also paula who's one of my brides she said Di, I just love your shoes. Um, I can't wait wait to wear them on my wedding day. So. Oh, how lovely. See, that that's it, isn't it? That's that's yeah. what we do this for. That is, you know, that is everything, really. You know, Absolutely. to hear things like that is just the loveliest thing, isn't it? Yeah, so, the, the shoes that she's picked, well, they're all beautiful, but they are particularly beautiful. So um, I'm excited for her. Uh, so what's the most important thing that we should know about you? The most important thing um, in, in career terms that the 
the thing that's I suppose most important to me um, in many ways, or, or the most important thing that's happened in many ways, is is and it goes back a, few, a good few years. Is um, the Victorian Albert Museum asked me to make a pair for them, yeah. um, and they're mm-hmm. in their permanent collection. And they, they they were for an exhibition that, that was all about fashion and included um, quite a large bridal section. Um, so I went to their um, private view and all that sort of thing, and it was really exciting seeing them wow. on. The- on display in the V&A. Um, it's a while back now, it was in the 90s. Um, but um, a couple of years ago, they had another exhibition um, all about bridal wear through the ages. And they wrote to me then and said, we'd like to invite you to the private view again because we're going to be um, putting the shoes on display. So they were there again. So I took my husband and and he was like, oh, it's my proudest moment ever. My Aww. wife has shoes in the v you know. And for me, that is probably the most... You know, it's a lasting thing, isn't it? They're going to be there long after I'm gone, and so on. Yeah. Um, and um, and I suppose through through my career, I've you know made shoes for lots of people, and and it's always a privilege and a lovely thing to do. Um, but I suppose in terms of importance to me personally, that's that's a really big thing. And you know, I feel um, whenever I think about it, I, f- I feel a real sense of pride that that they're there. Tucked away That's, that is amazing I need to go there now just to see this pair of shoes. Oh, well do you know what they are because they have such a vast and huge collection yeah um, most stuff isn't out all the time so you have to ask for them you know to bring them out basically oh okay um, so they bring them out for exhibitions for particular things they yeah. they have the most unbelievable vault as it were in fact there's a program on at the moment called yeah. something like the behind the scenes in the museum something like that i think it's on channel 4 um they are at the vna and they are looking into all the sort of restoration and all sorts and it's quite fascinating and my husband and i were watching it last night and he was going your shoes are in there somewhere oh <laughs> Yeah, and it's, you know, it, it, it is, you know, I have a real sense of pride about that and so on. Yeah, so you yeah. should. That is an amazing achievement. Thank you. Uh, but if you wanted to see them, yeah, you would have to um, check whether they would get them out for you. Okay. You know, they often will. So, um, but you just have to give them a bit of notice, really. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Who's Have you ever made um, shoes for kind of like famous people? Have you ever had any commissioned or... I have in the past. I mean, most people tell you not to let on that you've made shoes. Oh, all right, okay. You know I mean? yeah. So it, yeah, it's a, it's a bit tricky to say. But I have I have made them for sort of various sort of actresses and you know various people more in the past. Often though, you don't know because it it goes to the shop and it, you know if they're going through a shop and you don't necessarily know who it's wow. for. Yeah. But I, yeah, I have in the past, but. Like I said, I've I've always been told not to. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's the same thing. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously it's a really nice thing to do. And there was a particular actress a, a, a few years ago, and uh, I went, I actually went and met her at a shop and her um, children, and we made tiny versions. It's not something I would normally do. It was a huge amount of work and a bit of a nightmare. But we made tiny versions of her shoes for her two children who were being wow. bridesmaids, and that it was a really lovely thing to do. But oh it was you know a bit of a task yeah Yeah, I bet wow um so we're in lockdown at the minute and it's all it's all been a bit of a nightmare so what are you most looking forward to this year is there one thing that is standing out well there's two really the one is kind of the obvious seeing my family yeah Uh, my son and his girlfriend live in London and normally I would see I, I would sort of have my my Joe fix every so often and just go to London and see them and of course you just can't do it at the moment um and my father is in his early 80s and my stepmom and and I miss them terribly because yeah. I used to go once a fortnight even though they're a little distance I'd go once a fortnight and spend a day or two with them um uh, so yeah seeing family is a a big thing I've, I've I've really missed them but also my husband and I we have we have a little house we bought a little rundown house in Greece and oh, yeah. uh, we normally spend a lot of our summer going backwards and forwards and of course we couldn't last year we weren't able to go at all so I cannot wait to get back there and see all our friends there and just you know tootle out the door in the morning to the little beach down the road and have a swim and you know oh. so t- the tiny island um it, it's seven miles long and four miles wide so it's diddy 
but it's just perfect and lovely and it's a total escape from everything really um so we've been having zoom calls with friends over there and i'm like so jealous it's like it's sunny <laughs> how is it over there um how well it has been interesting because there uh, is such a tiny island as i say but their laws are so strict because oh, really? they they can't afford to get it on the island because they don't have a hospital they have a medical center not a hospital so if it got into the island they'd be in big trouble so they are very very strict and actually it's worked for them there are no cases they've been you know they've done amazingly well uh, i don't know so much about the mainland but um i think the islands like i say have had to be really careful so you know so far so good as far as they're concerned but it, yeah. it has affected their lives because obviously last year there was no tourist trade or anything so um but yeah i cannot wait to get back there <laughs> oh, I bet. it sounds idyllic it sounds amazing it um so are you what what's happening in terms of your shoe world are you designing a new collection or are you just uh do you do that once a year how how does yeah. that process work for you under normal circumstances yes i design a new collection once a year and, and I, I won't say i haven't but there hasn't been the same sort of pressure and and rush and excitement because there are no trade shows yeah uh, you know there are some online things going but that's not really for me I, I like to see people face to face if i can and you know i want them to to handle the shoes and see the detail and so on it's it's not the same for me doing doing it any other way um so yes i have still designed new styles but the i suppose the level of pressure has not been uh as it normally would um yeah. so yeah i i am in the middle of um sampling new stuff at the moment but i also i manufacture out in um a tiny little artisan factory in portugal and they've been shut down so many times by covid that that has you know keeps putting a halt on things and then we get going again and then it stops and you know it's all been a bit um, difficult so I think I've I've learned to go with the flow a bit more this year normally I'm a full-on pressure go 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 you know busy 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 and actually um I broke my arm last year very badly in June um mm -hmm. and I had to stop everything I you know I couldn't really do anything for about three months um and that taught me that actually you know the world isn't going to end yeah <laughs> so, um you know and and covid the same I, th I think you just have to learn to um accept things as they are and do what you can um and you know obviously i've still got my existing samples and so on and for most brides every year they haven't they haven't seen them before it's you know it's all new to them anyway so yes it's lovely to add new styles in and I am, as I say, still in the process of that. But we, you know, there's a lot of continuity every year. There are a lot of styles that, you know, brides love from one year to the next, and it's yeah. sometimes really hard to discontinue because you need to make a bit of space and so on. Yeah, and I don't have to do that a lot because my circumstances aren't like a big manufacturer. Um, but yeah, I, I, as I say, at the moment, I am in the process of making new samples and so on. But it's. It's just an ongoing process as and when it can happen at the moment. So learn to be calmer and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and let the excitement build for when we yeah. all can go exactly. to the shop and touch them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so if it's OK, I'm just going to ask you a few little questions that are of interest to people, but not really shoe related. So yeah. um, what book are you reading at the moment? I'm reading. Um, oh gosh uh, anatomy of a of a scandal it's called oh. um, it's um it's about a, a court case it's about some young people at um uh uni in um oxford oxford university okay and uh, it's all things that happen between them and how their lives diverge and then they end up coming back together it's not really necessarily my normal type of book but yeah. um uh, I was doing my food shop, my once a week food shop, and I just picked up three books because I was running out of books and so on. I read a lot of crime drama, oh, okay. that sort of thing, you know. Um, so I, I, I really like that sort of thing. I'm not into fantasy and Harry Potter, and yeah, and it's that's not for me. I, I like more of a gritty real life drama. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, so this one's it's good, but it's it's not my normal type of book necessarily. Yeah, but you're enjoying it, so that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's great. Um, and what's your favourite box set? Oh God, that's really difficult. I'm watching Bridgerton at the moment, oh. and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I have you watched it? No, I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I was a bit of a Downton fan, so I don't know if I can. Um... Oh, oh, you'll still love it. I really? was a Downton fan. Okay. Yeah. No, you'll still love it. I mean, I, I like anything that's a period drama. But what's gorgeous about Bridgerton is the the clothing is it's kind of, you know, true to the period in terms of shape and style. But the fabrics and the colours and so on that they use, a lot of them are quite contemporary. Oh. Um, it's really gorgeous. And um, I've, I've been making these collars. This is one of my collars that I've been making, which is just a little sort of diversification away from shoes but I love all all things all, all accessories really and one of the things that started me doing that was um I'd started sampling them and then I watched Bridgerton and I thought yeah I'm really going to do this because I love it um and uh, some of them there's one that I've called the Eloise after one of the girls in Bridgerton ah. um because it's just sort of ivory organza with a frilly edging and a, and a lovely sort of ah. satin bow and so on um so yeah that I I love that but I also love again I love crime things um so m another big favorite of mine is Mind Hunter um, oh I've not heard of that yeah it that's about um uh it was sort of a bit a bit about the beginning of um the FBI and and you know how oh. how serial killers got found and so on I sound really weird don't I but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, but I love things like that as well. I, I like all those sort of crime dramas and so on. Yeah. yeah. Anything sort of that's a bit gritty, real life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Fabulous. Yeah. So you just touched on your collars. Tell us tell us about tell us a little bit about them because they're a new. Are they, am I right? They're a new thing. Yeah, they are a new thing. Yeah, it, it's something I, I was thinking about doing sort of towards the end of last year. And um, it was, you know, there was a lot of talk about Zoom fashion and, uh, you know, wearing your pyjamas on the bottom and wearing something really glam and, and lovely on top and so on. And um, uh, I saw, um, I think it was Holly Willoughby who was wearing a, a lovely white um, cotton collar. And I thought, oh, you know, it's really lovely. And they were talking about them. Um, but I thought, oh, they'd be much nicer if they were, you know, prints or lace or. And yeah. so I just started sampling them. I mean, you know, you'll know yourself as well that weddings, a lot of weddings are on hold, are postponed yeah. um, and so on. And so there isn't, you know, there isn't the volume of work for me that there would normally have been in the last few months. It's been quieter, which on the one hand is is nice. But on the other, I'm not a person that can sit and do nothing. Um, yeah. So I started sampling um, collars using a lot of uh, lace and so on. I've been collecting vintage lace forever. I've got a big box of just pieces of lace and so on. And um, I used, I made some Christmas decorations where I used lace and so on on them. And then I thought, right, OK, that's it. But what am I going to do now? And then I thought <laughs> I'm going to start making some collars and, you know, I might make some headbands or some other bits and pieces. I don't know. So I started off with the lace, but then yeah. I've got pieces like the, you know this is a lovely sort of printed silk that I've been hanging on to for years thinking I don't know why I'm hanging on to that what am I going to do with it and I thought I know I'm going to make some collars with it and I love velvet ribbon and you know oh. this one's got a, a sort of ruffled um, edge and so on oh I'm watching myself and going the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, you know, I mean, it's literally on over a sweater. Oh, yeah. You, you undo it, take it off. Um, so it's like, you know, if you're on a Zoom call or a work call or, or on a, you know, girly call with your friends and so on, you can yeah. put something on and, and you know, brighten up what you're wearing. Um, and it, for me, it was just sort of a, a bit of a new challenge, really, something to do still in the sort of accessory world and so on but I made a few and I got so into it and I love doing it some of them are in lovely sort of blush and pale blue lace oh. with embroidery and and some of them are quite frilly and um, some are just in printed cotton so um they'll be going on my website soon so um we'll you know we'll see what happens with them it's been yeah. a bit of an indulgence if you like for me really I was going to say, can we buy them? So is will they be for sale on your website? Is that how? Yeah, yeah. I've got an Etsy shop and they're already, they've literally just gone on there. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, they'll be on my website um, very shortly. Yeah. 
So, because uh, I feel like, you know, the, the sort of the colouring and style and the fabrics and, you know, the embroidery and the embellishment, it all works with what I do anyway, you know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of it. Um, I mean, in fact, my favourite one, it's called Secret Garden and it's um, it's a blush pink, just a rounded blush pink collar, but I've done sort of silk ribbon embroidered flowers oh, on it and sort wow. of wreaths and fuchsias and, and so on. Um, and it's it's really, I nearly wore it today actually, but I was feeling a bit brighter and louder. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, um, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I love working with all sorts of fabrics and so on. My studio is just mm. boxes and boxes of flowers that I've made, of little bits of embroidery I've done, of pieces of vintage lace, of ribbons, of wow. embroidery threads. It's, it's, it's a bit mad really. Um, and I think things being quieter made me think, you know, what am I going to do with all these things then? And I thought yeah. I'm going to use them on my collars. So I'm really yeah. enjoying it. It's a really nice thing to do. So, um, yeah. And I've had loads of lovely comments. I've just started sharing them on Instagram, literally in the last couple of days. And I've had so many lovely collars, uh, comments. So um, <laughs> comments about my collars. So, yeah. <laughs> really nice they're beautiful i love them um i think i'm going to go and look on your etsy shop in a minute to see what, <laughs> see what they're like um so please can we just finish off with um your best piece of advice something that you maybe live by doesn't have to be wedding related but my best piece of advice and it's you know is a cliche it, but it's literally to be true to yourself it took me a long time to learn that many many years I don't know why it took me so long um because my dad always used to say it but I I, I have spent years worrying about what other people think of me what they think of what I'm wearing what they think of yeah. what I'm doing what they think of my business I was for years obsessed with what everyone thought thought about me all that well not obsessed the wrong word but you know I worried about it all of the time and now I've learned it was like doing the collars I just thought you know if I don't sell them it's not the end of the world you know it would be lovely to obviously but I'm going to make them because I want to make them and yeah. I think they're beautiful and you know it's a lovely thing to do so my advice really would be especially to brides because I think often with brides they're so swayed by their mum their best friend their auntie what the, you know what their friends have worn and, and everything and it's it, it is so easy to be swayed by other people so that would be my biggest piece of advice is actually just be true to yourself and you know trust in your own judgment I think that's what it boils down to really trust your own judgment I think that's so important, isn't it? Um, yeah. And sorry, my husband's running around in the background there. Uh, <laughs> um, it's it is something though that it takes a while to learn. You, yeah. I don't know why it just does. Um, I'm the same. You want you want a, you want to please other people, don't you? And make Absolutely. everybody else happy. But yeah, at the end of the it's day, it, isn't it? It's feeling that other people think you're doing the right thing and yeah. you know, appreciate what you're doing and, and all the rest of it. Whereas actually, really, you, you just got to learn to sort of, you know, trust yourself and trust your own judgment. That isn't to say we can't take advice from other people. Of course, that's important. But, uh, but I really think, you know, often in the past, I've not done things because I've thought that other people will think it's the wrong thing to do or, or you know, um, and then afterwards, I thought I, I should have done that, should have gone there, yeah. should have, you know, whatever it may be. So um, now I am better at following my own advice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's a natural thing to want other people to approve of you, as it were. Yeah. But actually, it's your life. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it, it's your decision. And if you think it's right, then it probably is. Absolutely. Well, Di, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you this afternoon. Thank you. No, thank you so much. And um, we all absolutely adore your shoes. So please keep making them. Um, and, and I'm going off to check out the collars now as well. So um, yeah, thank you so much. Well, there'll be some new styles coming along soon in the shoes as well. So I'm, oh. I'm working on those. So watch this space. But thank, thank you so you. much. It's been lovely to talk to you. No, and you, and stay safe and um, take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.